Traditionally, this has been the biggest event in the industry and in the continent. Um, and um, there's a lot of new learnings that people get when you come here. It's a lot of networking, um, a lot of exhibitions where people are introducing new things. One of the interesting things that's on the arena now is WiMAX, and you get to see all this. So the GSM or the Africa Com, what it's now turned out to be, uh, is quite a big event in Africa for the industry because um, you, you look at you look back at what people have done successfully and they share their learnings and you also look at what's coming and somehow take that home and uh, make it work for you. There's one thing that is undoubtedly or undisputably the fact that um, Africa is now one of the only areas where you have a growth and aggressive growth. Obviously getting it right, investing at the right time is extremely important. Um, most of the countries in sub-Saharan Africa have got penetrations well below 20%. So it's really, there's still a lot of potential. But there's one thing to understand is that um, most of the population is poor. We're looking at rural markets. So you're not going to go for your traditional um, you know, measurements in terms of looking for high outputs. You're going to look for numbers. You're going to make sure as an operator you're extremely efficient. You're going to make sure that you're trying to put in place offers that uh, can attract the youth uh, in a country like Uganda, you have 51% of uh, the population are actually youth. So how do you get those connected? Um, that means lowering the connection barrier by bringing in low-end handsets. As an operator, sometimes you find yourself subsidizing. So yes, Africa is interesting, but it's a different business uh, model than what you see probably in places like Europe, America, and uh, the Far East. You first of all have got uh, political and social challenges. Sometimes the regulators themselves don't have the right direction on how to regulate the industry. So you've got that to deal with. And once you're past that, uh, you've got the implementation of the network. You should see some of the terrain, the lack of infrastructure, the lack of electricity and, and roads and so forth. The challenges are the same, especially in most of, I'd say, sub-Saharan Africa with exclusion of South Africa. Um, be, be then the rural population, most of the countries are still very rural. They've got more or less the same income levels. Um, and therefore the challenges remain the same. The, the rural market remains the biggest challenge for most operators in most African countries. Uganda uh, this is an, ex an extremely competitive market. As I'm sure you're aware, Uganda was one of the first um, economies to liberalize the telecoms. And um, I think by Christmas, or I'd say by the new year, we'll have five operators in a country where you have 30 million people, 51% um, of those are youth. So a challenge. Most of the people don't have a planned income. They don't have a, a predictable income like most of the middle class would have in Europe. So making it sure that it's as convenient as possible, and that's going to things like low denomination airtime cards, sometimes as low as uh, a penny, if possible, uh, to make sure that when somebody has 10,000 shillings, you can take a share of that 10,000 shillings, bearing in mind that that 10,000 shillings is he's, he's going to pay for his transport, he's going to pay for his food, he's probably going to pay for his rent, he's going to pay for his beer or soda or whatever it is, and just make sure that you make it easy for him to take a share of that. And these are some of the things that um, we're doing in Uganda to make sure that we get there. Uh, we just um, put into, into the market um, about two years ago, uh, low denomination card. Our lowest denomination card is 1,000 shillings. That's less than a dollar. Uh, it's probably about 20, 20p um, to make sure it goes there. So the challenges of making sure even you're getting this printed at the lowest cost possible. Um, we just put out new handsets um, in t from China at about uh, $26 uh, personalized and branded, and that, that's, that's coming in from China. Even traditional manufacturers like Motorola and Nokia uh, are coming in to partner with us. We put in a market uh, handset from Nokia at about $30. So you're seeing a lot of this going in. Obviously, there's one other critical thing that you need to do is make sure that you embrace the community. Um, a lot of the communities look at companies like ourselves and companies like MTN and Celtel um, as uh, you know, people who have a lot to grab, just like you said, there's gold in the streets. The only way you can make sure you turn this around is that you put back into the community. So being a corporate uh, social responsibility, uh, having a, a good corporate social responsibility program is important. Um, we're involved in 
ICT programs, putting computer into schools, uh, working with the orphan children, sponsoring sports. So then the community actually sees you as uh, one of them and then can accept the brand. Um, ensuring you put distribution to the, the, as near to the customer is extremely important. And you turn, should I say, potentially beggars into entrepreneurs. So we try and trickle down the distribution model as far down to where somebody can retail you know, as, as low as five cards. And they, they'll use probably 10 pounds a day as their capital and they'll keep going to the shop and uh, making sure that um, they buy, sell off and buy and come and do that. So you build entrepreneurs and all of a sudden Uganda Telecom impacts over 10,000 people indirectly working for us. Uh, so, that, that, so that's critical. Putting in place relevant services is also critical. The, the right VAS in terms of info content, um, in terms of things like sharing airtime, me able to send my mother in the village airtime and, and so forth. Um, because it's extremely, why I keep stressing the rural market is a lot of the traffic from the urban areas actually does go to, to the rural traffic. And I think uh, yesterday I was looking at uh, a presentation by Michael Joseph, the CEO of Safaricom in Kenya. And he said in Kenya about 44% of the traffic is actually destined to the rural area. So much as putting a base station in the rural area may not really be a great return on investment on its own from the subscribers staying in that area, uh, when you really look at it, it becomes a critical component to make sure that you have models and uh, business models to serve them. Because at the end of the day, they actually make or break you. And I think that's where the future of most operators is in Africa. How best you can address that, um, that, that rural market.